my progress in electronic start when I begin using various regulators in my circuit design. Voltage regulators are very important components and they are integral part of professional and stable circuit design. You as a circuit designer must be careful of selecting right regulators. If not, your project will not work fine and it will face many problems. Voltage regulators are divided into two general categories, linear regulators and switching regulators. In this video, I will talk about these two categories and I will tell you 10 important points about similarity and difference between these two types of regulators in application, not theory, to help you choose best regulator for your circuit design. Please stay with me in the rest of this video. Let's begin with DC voltage regulator definition. A DC voltage regulator is an electronical component that takes variable, unstable, and noisy input voltage and converts it into steady, clean, predefined, precise, and strong enough output voltage. Maybe this guy is most famous voltage regulator in the world. It's the DC 5 volt linear voltage regulator. It was present in all of my childhood projects, but my progress in electronics started from the time I began using various voltage regulators in my projects. It is important to know voltage regulators and their characteristics. DC voltage regulators fall into two main categories, linear regulators and switching regulators. Both of them are regulating voltage, but in quite different way. And this fact makes it important to know them to select proper regulator type for your project. In most cases, you can use either linear regulator or switching regulator. You can use them instead of each other and there is no matter. But some cases are sensitive and you have to be more careful about selecting right regulator type. So let's consider similarity and difference between these two types of regulators. This will help us when we are selecting regulator type. Point number one, inner structure and mechanism. Main difference between linear regulators and switching regulators is the way they regulate voltage. Linear regulators act like a variable resistor which blocks voltage when output voltage is higher than desired voltage. But switching regulators act like a switch which allows voltage to pass when output voltage is under desired voltage. This is not symbol of linear regulator, but I use it because it makes it easy to understand how linear regulators work. A linear regulator is like a variable resistor which decrease its resistance when the load needs more current and increase its resistance when the load needs less current to keep voltage on load fixed. And also this is not symbol of switching regulator, but I use it because it makes it easy to understand how switching regulators work. A switching regulator is like a switch and its job is to charge this capacitor parallel with load. The regulator must check the voltage of capacitor in predefined period of time and if the voltage of capacitor is under a certain value, switch have to turn on and charge the capacitor to keep voltage on the load fixed. This is not a scientific explanation, but it is somehow true. Point number two, buck regulation. A DC voltage regulator who its input voltage is higher than its output voltage is called a buck or step down voltage regulator. There is either linear buck regulators or switching buck regulators available in market. Both of them can convert high voltages to low voltages. I mean, you can find part numbers from both of them which can convert high voltage to low voltage and there is no difference from this point of view between linear or switching regulators. A buck regulator 
regardless of its inner structure, can accept unstable variable high input voltage and give us a steady low output voltage. Point number three, boost regulation. A DC voltage regulator which its input voltage is lower than its output voltage is called a boost or a step up regulator. There are so many switching regulators which can boost voltage but linear regulators can't boost voltage due to their inner structure and mechanism of regulation. Linear regulators can only convert high voltage to low voltage and they can't boost voltage but switching boost regulators can easily increase voltage. Point number 4. Output voltage amount. Output voltage can be fixed or adjustable either in linear or switching regulators. There is a common mistake among beginners. They think that transistor potentiometer combination which we use to produce variable voltage in this card is also a regulator. But it is not because it doesn't fit in regulator definition. However, its output voltage is variable and somehow adjustable but it is not a regulator. Output voltage of a regulator must be independent to its input voltage. But in transistor potentiometer combination, output voltage is directly related to its input voltage. Point number five, input and output voltage difference. Switching regulators are much more tolerant to input and output voltage difference related to linear regulators. For example, MPQ4430 regulator can easily convert 30 volt to 5 volt and drive one amp load on its output without overheating. But if a linear regulator do this, probably it will overheat and damage itself and other components. Sometimes linear regulators blow up quickly and burn MCU and other sensitive components just because of high difference between their input and output voltages. I remember in one of my projects, I saw a lot of damage just because of not following this rule. I used a 3.3 volt AMS 1117 regulator without considering its input and output voltage difference and this caused MCU and regulator to burn. Point number six, dropout voltage. Usually dropout voltage of switching regulators is low compared to linear. Dropout voltage is a parameter available in datasheet of every regulator. It indicates the amount of voltage that input of a regulator got to be more than its output to work properly. For instance, dropout voltage of L7805 linear 5 volt regulator is 2 volt according to its datasheet. So to this component work properly, you have to apply 7 volt or more to its input. Applying voltages under 7 volt, for example 6 volt to input of this regulator will result in unstable or unpredictable output voltage. Point number 7. Noise. Switching regulators and linear regulators are quite different from noise point of view. Linear regulators are more silent but switching regulators produce noise because of their inner structure, switching mechanism and pulse frequency inside them. Output voltage ripple in linear regulators is less than switching regulators. So linear regulators are more dependable to use as power supply for sensitive components like microcontrollers. Let's see an experiment to better understand this point. This is a 5 volt linear regulator and this one is adjustable switching regulator module. First of all, I'm gonna use this 8 volt input voltage and see output voltage of these regulators on oscilloscope. Look here, this yellow signal is output voltage of linear regulator and this blue signal is output voltage of the switching regulator. It is clear that noise on linear regulator is less than switching. Let's do another experiment. I'm gonna connect a 100 ohm resistor to these voltages and see how they act. These triangle shaped ripples here are because of switching behavior of switching regulators. Each one of them appears when switch inside regulator turns off. 
By increasing output current, these ripples get bigger. These pulses here are synchron with switch on-off signals. You see, every time a pulse comes here, a ripple appears in output voltage. There is no ripple in linear regulator output. If you need low voltage somewhere in your circuit, it is recommended to use a linear regulator because switching regulator output voltage ripple is much more noticeable in low voltages. Because of that, linear regulators are more suitable for low voltages. Point number 8. Cost and usage. Usually switching regulators have higher price and they are difficult to implement. A switching regulator requires selecting external component values, tuning control loop for stability and careful layout design. But in contrast, linear regulators are easy to use and cheap. Point number 9. Performance, sensitivity and efficiency. Usually switching regulators are much more efficient and deliver much more current on desired output voltage. But in contrast, linear regulators overheat and blow up easily and they are more sensitive to input output voltage difference. Point number 10. Reference voltage. Some part numbers of linear regulators are designed just for providing reference voltage in tiny packages and limited current. They are used for special purposes. For example, they are used for providing reference voltage to drive a joystick, for example. You may ask why we shouldn't use common 5V to drive a joystick. In one of my next videos, I will explain it in detail with examples and experiments. So my friend, take my advice and use multiple regulators in your project. Using numerous and proper regulators in your project will cause more stability, noise suppression and more reliability of your circuit. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe for more.